Hello, beautiful friends of Bookish fam. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today for another bookness video. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. And if you are a returning subscriber, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, we're here to talk about books that I should have read in 2023. So if you watched some of my bookmas videos last year, you'll know that I had some big goals for 2023, particularly as they related to reading challenges and backlist books and continuing in series. And so there were definitely some books that were on my radar, especially for the reading challenges that I had every intention of reading in 2023, and I just didn't get around to for whatever reason. So let's go ahead and talk about some books that I originally had on my 2023 TBR that didn't get read. One of the main ones that I had every intention of getting to in 2023 that I didn't was A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Mass. This is the fourth full length novel in her A Court of Thorns and Roses series. Technically, the A Court of Thorns and Roses was a trilogy that ended and then this second trilogy has begun, but it's all really connected. Like you cannot start this without reading the first trilogy. So I all basically combine it into one. I wanted to go ahead and get to this in 2023 because I wanted to finally get caught up in this series. Then I got distracted by House of Sky and Breath. And after I finished House of Sky and Breath, you would think that would make me jump into this one immediately, but it didn't. It made me jump into Tower of Dawn from the Throne of Glass series. So I read Tower of Dawn and then I just needed a break from Sarah J Mass and her world. I cannot binge series. I do need breaks and so after that I just had no interest in picking up any more Sarah J Mass for the rest of the year and so of course this one didn't get read. But this is definitely going to be a very high priority for 2024 because I want to read this as well as the final book in the Throne of Glass series which I'm going to be talking about in just a second before I get to the third book in the Crescent City series. Now that one's coming out in January. I have no intention of reading that in January whatsoever but at the very least I want to get completed in these series before I continue with the Crescent City series. So really quickly, I will go ahead and talk about Kingdom of Ash, which is the seventh and final book in her Throne of Glass series. This was actually not originally on my 2023 TBR. I was really in no hurry to finish this series because it's completed. It wasn't going anywhere. And so I don't even think I had any intention of reading Tower of Dawn. Then, like I said, I finished House of Sky and Breath. The ending of that book kind of sent me down a Sarah J Mass rabbit hole, and I instantly wanted to continue with more of her series. And then I just kind of got burnt out. So would I like to finish this in 2024? Yes, absolutely. Do I think I'll get to it? I don't know. If I'm going to pick up a book like this, I know instantly that it's going to take me a very long time to sit down and immersively read or just physically read with my eyeballs, and I'm not going to get through it very fast. And I also have to be relaxed in order to do it. I cannot read to relax. That's another thing. I cannot read to relax. I have to be in a relaxed mental state in order to sit down and physically read. And so if that's not happening, then this is not happening either. So already between this and A Court of Silver Flames, I have two massively chunky fantasies on my TBR for 2024, and that's going to basically whittle down any of the other chunky fantasies that I might want to read in 2024. So I would very much like to get to this, but I'm also very intimidated by it for the fact that it is a last book of the series. And I've heard that this is a heartbreaker and I don't know if I'm emotionally ready. So I may procrastinate on this one just a little bit more, but I would very much like to finish it in 2024 if possible. Speaking of chunky fantasies that I was supposed to get to and did not in 2023, we have Hero of Ages, which is the third book in the first era of Mistborn. That was for sure on my TBR for 2023, but instead I decided to start the Stormlight Archives. Why did I decide? I to start probably one of the most epic massive fantasy series of all time. I don't know, but I did and I had a really good time reading it and I look forward to continuing with it. But Mistborn definitely got pushed to the back burner and I think that's just because I don't love Mistborn. It just doesn't work for me as much as it works for everybody else. But I do want to try immersively reading that third book. In the past, I have not done that and I think it would help me a lot. So that is another one that I would very much like to get to in 2024 if for no other reason than to mark this trilogy as completed and not have to worry about it anymore. Another book that was on my 2023 TBR that I did not get read was Winter by Marissa Meyer. I really wanted to go ahead and finish out the series. I did read the third book, Crest, so I made progress in the series, but I didn't end up getting to Winter. That is another very thick book, but it is a YA sci-fi kind of story, and I'm able to easily listen to those. So even though it might take me a little bit longer to listen to than a normal length book, I would still fly through that one very easily. So it's not the length of that one that intimidates me at all. This is just one that I didn't manage to get around to. I very much enjoy this series. I had a great time with it, and I didn't think that I would. I never had any interest in reading Cinder until one day I picked it up. I think it was for a book club and I loved it. So this is another YA series that I will absolutely be completing. I have no problem completing this series. It's just something that I didn't get around to in 2023. A book that I admit that I'm kind of procrastinating on is Running Wild by K.A. Tucker. This is the third book in the Simple Wild series by her and y'all know how I feel about the Simple Wild series. I absolutely adore it with my whole heart. It is one of my favorite romance series of all time. I absolutely loved the first two books in the series. I even loved the novella. Like this series is 
as a five star series across the board. And I'm very hesitant to read Running Wild just because I'm so worried that I'm not going to love it. I don't necessarily expect to love it like the first two, but I'm worried that I'm not going to love it at all, which is kind of weird because I've heard great things about this story. And a lot of people who love the series like I do actually say that this is their favorite. And so I don't know why I'm so trepidatious about going into it, but I am. And so I've just really been procrastinating on it this year. And that's especially true since I read a couple of K.A. Tucker books this year that didn't really do it for me. I DNF'd one of her other series and then I read the third book in another and it wasn't my favorite. So I'm just a little bit worried that maybe I'm outgrowing K.A. Tucker or that maybe her books are not as great as I think they are. And so I'm worried that that's going to extend into the Simple Wild series. But I really do want to read this. It's absolutely going on my 2024 TBR because it's going to satisfy a challenge prompt and I just need to read it. I need to go ahead and rip off the band-aid and get it done. Royal Assassin is another book that I didn't get read. I was supposed to buddy read this with Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand, but we both got distracted with House of Sky and Breath. We were supposed to buddy read this together because we buddy read the first book. And then I think we were buddy reading something else earlier this year. I can't remember what it was. And then I was all of a sudden like, you know what? Do you want to read House of Sky and Breath together? And then this just kind of got pushed to the wayside. This is the second book in the Farseer trilogy by Robin Hobb. And I enjoyed the first one enough that I wanted to go ahead and continue. I do have the beautiful illustrated editions of the story. And I definitely want to continue when Sarah is ready to continue. So I'm tentatively putting this on my TBR for 2024 in case Sarah is ready to buddy read it. Next, I have The Diamond Eye by Kate Quinn. So this was not a book that was originally on my TBR at the end of 2022 going into 2023. This is a book that was sent to me as part of one of the gifting exchanges that I'm a part of. And I try to read those books as soon as they come into me. So any book that is sent to me, whether it's sent as a gift, whether it's sent in a book box, I'm trying to read those as they come in as I can because I don't want them just sitting on my shelves and potentially losing interest in them. This is not one that I'm afraid that I'm going to lose interest in by any means, but this is one that I did want to get to and it just never happened. I actually received this and The Rose Code roughly around the same time from two different gifting things that I was a part of. And I read The Rose Code and I loved it. And then this just got put back onto my TBR, but I'm not going to now because it's actually going to satisfy some reading challenges in 2024. As you can tell, I've already been pre-planning some of the books that I do want to satisfy some of these reading challenges. And so I'm just going to go ahead and take the loss and say that I should have read this in 2023. I didn't. Now I'm going to read it in 2024. Kate Quinn is definitely an autobi historical fiction author for me at this point. I absolutely love the stories that she writes. She's an incredible storyteller. And a lot of the books that she writes are set during World War II and they feature very strong women, especially like resistance women. And I just absolutely love that. So I'm very excited to get to this, which is about a female sniper, which I'm down for. So as bummed as I am that I won't be getting to this in 2023, I am very looking forward to getting to this in 2024. All right, next, I'm going to be very vague and secretive and just hold up this big old stack of nine books and say that I wanted to read these in 2023 because they were going to be part of a secret reading vlog or two that I never got to, that I never prioritized. And I didn't need to include these in this video because y'all knew absolutely nothing about these plans or these books, but I'm kind of putting it on here as accountability. Like maybe if I put it on here, I will actually make these books a priority in 2024. I don't know, but if you are interested in potentially having me read these books that you know absolutely nothing about and you would like to see a vlog about them, please comment down below and let me know. Another book that I planned to read in 2023 that y'all knew nothing about because I only just made the decision to reread it a couple of months ago and it just never happened, Red Rising by Pierce Brown. Now there's a story behind this. So I first read this book in, I want to say it was 2017 or 2018. This was a time before a couple of big changes happened to me as a reader. First of all, during this time, I was not into fantasy almost at all. I didn't consider myself a fantasy reader. I had a really hard time reading fantasy and understanding what was going on in those books. And the same could really be said for sci-fi. And this had a lot of the same elements that fantasy had that I didn't really connect to, such as like made up terminology and a lot of cast characters and a fictional world, all of the stuff that I could never connect to or understand. Also, this happened before I discovered audiobooks and before I discovered immersive reading. And that has really helped improve my reading over the past couple of years. I wanted to see if I could read this book today as the reader that I am and see if I enjoyed it more because I have heard literally nothing but amazing things about this series. And I'm like, I have got to be missing something here. And enough time has passed where I really don't remember almost anything about the story. I remember the overall premise and some of the things that I didn't like about it, but I don't think that those same things would bug me today because of how I've grown as a reader. And so what really prompted me to make the decision to go ahead and reread it was that Fairy Loot announced a beautiful release of the first three books in this series. It's part of their new, I think they're called like iron editions and they're stunning and I wanted them. But I was like, you know what? You need to reread the book first because what if you don't like it again and you just ordered the series? But of course I didn't read it. The release came. I bought the books. They're going to be sent to me. So I really need to know if I'm going to love the series or not. Now, will I read this before I get the series? I have absolutely no idea. There could still potentially be a chance for me to read this in December if I can get my act together, but it's not very long y'all. It is just shy of 400 pages. And I know that it's not going to be as hard to read as some of the more epic fantasies that I have on the list. So I'm not necessarily intimidated by this. It's 
just a matter of having the time and attention to devote to it. So we're going to see. I really do want to have the experience with this book again and I believe it will be kind of like reading it for the first time. So I'm hoping that by including it in this video I will manage to get to it. And I think the very last book that I want to talk with you all today about is It Starts With Us by Colleen Hoover. This is the second book in the It Ends With Us duology. This is a book that is really just fan service. It primarily follows Atlas Corrigan from the first book and he was my favorite character from the first book and I think that if he had been featured more I would have loved the first book more. As it is It Ends With Us is definitely not the strongest Colleen Hoover in my opinion even though I know that it's a lot of people's favorite. It was not mine but when this came out and I knew that we were going to get more of Atlas I was like yes sign me up. So I just need to go ahead and read this and get this done because it's only a duology and then I would be done and I won't have to worry about it anymore. This will certainly go on my TBR for 2024 and hopefully I can get to it. All right everybody that is it. Those are some of the books that I plan to read in 2023 and I just did not get around to them. Please comment down below and let me know some of the books you plan to read in 23 that you just did not and let me know if you plan on trying to get to them in 2024. If you have made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty go ahead and just leave me the emoji of your choice. Why not? Go ahead and leave me the emoji of your choice to let me know that you are here. Y'all know that I really love seeing your comments. I love the engagement and it helps my channel so very much. And as always if you like this video or if you just like me please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. I am participating in Bookmas meeting from December 1st through December 25th. You should see one video upload from me a day leading up until Christmas and so if you are interested in seeing what content I have in store please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well so you do not miss any of my videos. Y'all know that I love connecting with you in my videos or on any of my other social media platforms which I always leave linked down below along with the books that I've talked about in a video. And until next time y'all.